Let's get back to Australia Talks at the ABC, which I showed you a snippet of at the top of the program. It's such a big production, this. They've spent a lot of money on it. Won't tell us how much. But I find it kind of offensive the way they have this self-selecting survey and then tell us this is what Australia thinks. It's like they're almost trying to shape in our mind what they think, their own version of Australia. They had a big 90-minute special on the ABC on the taxpayer-funded TV channel last night. Here's how they introduced it. I am so pumped to be part of this special event, which tonight we're broadcasting from Sydney on Gadigal land and we pay our respects to elders past and present. I still can't believe what the ABC has created here. Are you guys excited? Yeah. The Australia Talk survey asked thousands of you at home a lot of questions, some quite nosy, and tonight we can bring you, as a result, an extraordinary snapshot of what the country thinks. That's right, we asked everything like if you're, if you're like your boss, if smacking your kids is OK, even how often you change your sheets. And I found out you meant to change your sheets. Well, that gives you a taste of it. Some of it was very silly like that. Others, times it got involved in some pretty big issues. Let's bring in Sophie Olsworth, who's a media writer for the Australian newspaper, and Evan Mulholland, who's with the Institute of Public Affairs. Let's start with you, Sophie. Uh, it's just such an extravagant uh, production. Yeah, you know, a lot of money spent there. Um, uh, you know, good on them. I, I just thought that so much of it was so frivolous. And then when they got into the big issues, it was so skewed, wasn't it, in a sort of a woke left way? Well, Chris, it, it was obviously a very big production that they'd spent a lot of money and time on, uh, but it was 90 minutes of my life that I would actually like back. Uh, Chris, <laughs> on this show, you talk about hard-hitting issues. Uh, you know, each segment you have is very topical. Well, can we just lower the tone here a bit? Because they wanted to know how often you wash your towel. Should you ask people to take their shoes off when they walk into your house? And how often you vacuum your house? I mean... Goodness gracious me, this is just frivolous nonsense that no one really cares about. Uh, and a, a couple of the things in there, I mean, we we're basically told that we're all racists. Australians are a heavily racist population, which, uh, you know, I dispute. Uh, and other things in there were just, a lot of it was nonsense and they tried to make humour with it. It was a weird combination. And I think a lot of people would be watching it going, what on earth are we watching here? Yeah, how often we have sex, who we might want to have sex with, how often we wash ourselves, as you say. It was bizarre, frivolous stuff. And, but Evan, uh, as Sophie mentioned at the top of the program, I showed how it got into some big issues. It tried to tell us that 50% of Australians basically think capitalism is rotten. And we'll come to that racism stuff in a, in a moment. But, but you know a lot about this sort of stuff and the surveys that are taken. And the idea that this is actually a representative survey of Australia is nonsense, isn't it? Because the, the ABC and the uni and the, and the company that works with them actually target people who have used the ABC vote compass. Well, that sort of rules out 90% of mainstream Australia for a starters, doesn't it? Exactly. And they've said, you know, it, it's, it's weighted against census data, um, but it's weighted against census data upon every electorate ge geographically. It's still the main people that have participated in this survey are taken from ABC viewers, people that consume ABC content. So you're always going to get a green left perspective, absolutely not representative. And the ABC says it has control over selection bias, but look at all the topics it covered. Climate change, all the isms, racism, sexism, feminism, uh, every sort of identity politics possible. And as you said, um, they're completely loaded questions like about um, capitalism doing more harm than good. Australia Day should not be celebrated on January 26. Now, uh, Paul Barry uh, used an entire episode of Media Watch to have a go at the RTA over supposed not neutral questions. I, I dare him to uh, use the same experts he quoted to have a go at the ABC's use of not neutral questions in this case. Well, the ABC won't tell us how much this special cost. It would have been very, very expensive. They even brought in some commercial television star power. They won't tell us how much that cost or whether they paid for that as well. But let's show a snippet from that commercial star in Hamish Blake. And the big topic he examines is how often we masturbate. What electorate would you say has the highest percentage of people who masturbate? <laughs> Sydney is the winner. So I was thinking, we've got to celebrate this. I've come up with an ad to pitch Sydney as perhaps a great new tourist destination to really get that 
solo dollar. Mm, yes, OK. <laughs> it's pushing the boundaries of taste. I mean, we do have... Give us a hand. <laughs> we want more comers here. Oh, my God. Can we use that? It's all yours. Sophie, that kind of underscores your point, doesn't it? I mean, Chris, seriously, this is what our money is being spent on. What a load of rubbish. Uh, Tanya Plibersek going along with that. I mean, she was a good sport, I guess, to try and make fun of it. But it was just, it was trashy TV. I'm shocked that they would even put questions like that in there. But, Chris, they did mention you on the program. So you got a shout-out, a little plug for Sky News in there, that comedian lady that so seems to be obsessed with your show. I, I can't remember her name, but she made a shout-out to you. So good to see Sky got a mention. Yeah, I, I did see that, she, uh, you know, and, uh, yeah, good to plug the show and our very successful shows here on the <laughs> Kenny Report and uh, Kenny on Media. But she said that I found her stuff, uh, that, that, uh, that uh, she was offensive to mainstream Australians, which is kind of gets to what the whole Australia Talks thing is about, because that's not what we say. We say the problem is they seem to say that mainstream Australians are offensive. They seem to be saying that we're all racist and redneck and all the rest of it. In fact, that came up when they did have one really really high calibre guest on the program. I wonder if he really knew what he was walking into, but they got the former Prime Minister John Howard on the program and have a look at what he was addressing. Mr Howard, after the Cronulla riots, you refused to call it out as racist. Instead, you said uh, there is no underlying racism in Australia. Yet today, 76% of Australians say there is a lot of racism in Australia. Are mm. they wrong? Well, that has not been my experience. I can say, I, I have to respectfully, to that 76%, say that I don't think there is underlying racism in Australia. I think there are racists in Australia. You don't think there's an underlying racism? No, I don't. On reflection, would you characterise the Cronulla riots as racist? No, I, I, I don't. I don't alter my view. I remember that very, very vividly. Yeah, so that's what they push uh, John Howard on, uh, Evan, to try and prove their thesis that we're a racist country. Who would you back, an Australia Talk survey or John Howard's intuition about where the Australian public is? I would back John Howard every day of the week. Australians are egalitarian. They believe we're all equal. They don't subscribe to this critical race theory that the ABC do. But on another point, even the editorialising of this program is biased. One of the packages they had showed... Uh, showed uh, asked if uh, 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 politicians are corrupt and then immediately cut to a grainy stock footage of Scott Morrison shaking someone's hand. So even the editorial packages behind this program is biased, so the questions are biased, the editorial are biased, and even the questions asked to John Howard are biased. Yeah, it was, it was bizarre um, because yeah, I noticed that too. I think Annabelle Crabb at some stage was pushing, might have been even John Howard, Sophie, about yeah, where are the, how come no ministers have been held accountable? How, how come no ministers have fallen by the wayside under this government, which seems a pretty tendentious way to run it, especially she was running it on the very day that Barnaby Joyce had come back from three years on the backbench. Look, it was a good opportunity for them, I guess, to do what they seem to always love doing, and that's uh, bash up the coalition uh, and leave the opposition aside. Uh, but, Chris, seriously, some of this stuff in this show, I mean, I'm not sure who the Brains Trust was behind it. One stat in there, one-third of males, Chris, are feminists. That frightens me. Male feminists frighten me. And there was one lady in there from Western Australian town of Northam, I think it said, and she said that she's sick of whinging women, always thinking they're hard done by. And I'm with her. I mean, we're just making out <laughs> here that everyone's racist, everyone's sexist, we're all a bunch of horrible people. I mean, you leave watching that program feeling pretty bad about yourself. Yeah, I uh, know a lot of blokes. I've met a lot of blokes, men and women, over many, many years. But of the blokes, there's only one I've ever met who's self-described as a feminist. And I used to work for him, and uh, he's pretty well known around the place. Uh, it's uh, strange stuff. Thanks for joining us, Evan and Sophie. Always got to keep some scrutiny on the ABC and how they blow $1.1 billion a year.